Yama, Yamaka. Hi everyone. I'm here, I'm Rebecca Bateman, the Indigenous Curator of the National Library, and I'm here on Ngunnawal and Ngambri country. I'm so grateful to be on this beautiful country today as I pay my deepest respects to the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people who cared for this land for millennia. I extend this respect to the hundreds of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities represented in the National Co Library's collection and in Trove. The library and its network of partners across this land care for the knowledge, history, culture and language that belongs to Indigenous nations and custodians from all over Australia, including my own mob, the Wailwood, Gamilaroi and Bidjara peoples. In acknowledging country, I pay my deepest respects to each and every one of the Indigenous nations, communities and elders whose stories can be found in Trove and in the National Library's collection. The library has worked with many Indigenous communities over the years, including a number who have been incredibly ge generous with their time and knowledge to help Trove on its journey to become a more culturally safe space. Thank you all for welcoming us onto your country and for helping us to learn. On behalf of the National Library and Trove, I acknowledge the deep and enduring connection of all Indigenous Australians to country and I pay my deepest respects to elders past, present and emerging who are and will be the custodians of this land. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for that welcome and acknowledgement. Uh, my name is Annabelle Crabb and I too would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands from which we all dial in or appear in person today. Um, I'm here on the lands of the Ngunnawal people. Uh, I am at the National Library uh, in a room full of socially distanced library and technical staff and it is my happy place so I'm incredibly excited to be here and more excited still to welcome you to this quite prestigious day, which is commemorating the new chapter in the life of Trove. And I know everybody gathered digitally and virtually uh, and, and tuning into today's uh, event will be well informed about what Trove is. It is, of course, a deep swimming pool of cultural knowledge and Aladdin's cave of intelligence, a uh, trove in which one can easily lose oneself for hours, if not days. It is uh, used by family researchers, historians, journalists even, uh, and it is a national treasure and the, uh, the revolutionary new format in which we can enjoy it from this week is a great gift to our nation. Now, I'm an old newspaper journalist and there are um, 11 million newspaper pages uh, digitised in Trove from the Sydney Gazette and New South Wales Advertiser, which was the first newspaper published in, in Australia in 1803. Trove now includes over 1,500 newspaper titles. Um, and as we know from recent weeks, newspaper titles are valuable things to hold on to. Um, the great thing about Trove, of course, it is, is that it's a um, hugely democratic and egalitarian resource. It is um, unique, I think, in the world in the um, breadth and generosity of the access that it gives to everyday users. It's free. You could be in far north Queensland and be flicking through the pages of the 1896 Mudgy Guardian. No problem at all, thank you, Trove. Um, you could be sitting in your living room in Geraldton and researching the history of Australian literature using books and reviews and all the resources of uh, libraries as far flung as Melbourne, Perth and Dubbo. Um, Yesterday, Trove uh, tweeted to its users, um, alerting them to the new um, updated chapter format and asking them to share their best experiences on Trove. And it's such a great little collection of commentary from people who used and loved Trove. Jackie French, the writer, said that she discovered through Trove that um, Australia was mad for giant pumpkins in 1846. I did not know that either, Jackie. Thank you very much. Um, another user had found, imagine this, an interview between their great-great-grandfather, a convict, and Caroline Chisholm awesome find. And that's what Trove is. It's just a gold mine of history that we didn't necessarily know was there. Um, at the ABC, we've just finished making our second series of a show called Back in Time for Dinner, in which we took our long-suffering family back to the 1900s and made them live through the plague, the Depression, World War I. Um, and 
our secret weapon was trove because we were all familiar with the great geopolitical events of the age, but how do you explain how that, uh, those events impacted on the lives of ordinary Australians? You go to Trove and you read the newspapers, you look at the ads and read the magazines. It really is an extraordinary, extraordinary resource. So, I know I'm going on and on about it, but I'm very, very enthusiastic. We have um, experts aplenty to talk about Trove today. Um, we also have uh, keen Trove users, including the Minister for Communications, Cyber Safety and the Arts, Dr. Um, uh, the Honourable, sorry, didn't mean to make you a doctor, Minister, um, the Honourable Paul Fletcher MP, the Chair of the Council of the National Library, who is a doctor, Dr. Brett Mason, and of course the Library's Director General, Dr. Murray Louise Ayres, who uh, will join us for a panel discussion in a moment. Um, we also have uh, Laurie Atkinson, Director of the Law, Victoria, Law Library of Victoria and Supreme Court Librarian, very authoritative title. We have uh, John Morso, who is Access Officer of Research Librarian at the Australian Institute of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Studies. And we have, of course, as I mentioned, um, Murray Louise Ayres, the Director General of this great library. And historian Dr. Bruce Penney is joining us online as well because we're all about dialing in remotely, aren't we, uh, after the few months that we've had. Now, first of all, I'd like to give you a little tantalising glimpse of what it is we mean when we talk about Trove's next chapter. Imagine Australia at your fingertips. This is Trove. A treasure trove of collective wonder for all Australians. Trove unlocks a uniquely Australian source of knowledge, history and experience. Explore Australian museums, universities, libraries, galleries, national and local organisations online. And access to millions of digitised newspaper articles and publications, all at your fingertips, for free. No matter where you are across Australia or around the world, and brought to you by the National Library of Australia, working in collaboration with hundreds of Trove partner institutions around Australia. Uncover wild and unknown Australian historical stories and unravel a family heritage you never knew existed. Discover moments of celebration and wonder. It's all waiting to be revealed in Trove. Trove can help you dive into your passion through its incredible collections of newspapers, books, magazines, oral history, past research papers, music and so much more. And Trove offers more ways for you to find your people. To connect, celebrate and share your stories. Add your collections and ideas here. You are part of our history. You don't need to know what you're looking for with Trove. You simply need to be curious. So Trove's next chapter is something that is truly open to everyone, even to politicians who are, uh, of course, always looking for exciting new ways to read about themselves in the paper. And uh, um, I would, on that note, like to welcome the Honourable Paul Fret Fletcher, Trove advocate, Trove champion, and Minister for Communications, Cyber Safety and the Arts. Minister. <laughs> Well, it's great to join you by video, something we're doing a lot of in these pandemic times, for this celebration of the next stage of the development of Trove. Trove is a fantastic resource, allowing people around Australia, indeed around the world, digital access to so much of the National Library's collection. Recently, I had a question I wanted to answer. Why is there a road in the Karinga National Park, just north of my electorate, called the General Liberator San Martin Drive? I found the answer to that by going through Trove. It was, I think, in about 1953, the then New South Wales Labor government, for reasons known only to themselves, decided that they wanted to honour a hero of the Argentinian liberation some 100 years before. It's a question that's mystified many people as they go through that beautiful stretch of the National Park, and I was able to find the answer through Trove. Let's get back to Trove, the topic of this evening. A wonderful resource, and of course, it's been updated and refreshed 
with this most recent piece of work, which now means, for example, that it's better suited to being viewed over a mobile device and it contains the parliamentary papers. And what could be more appealing for a political nerd than the idea that you can access all of the parliamentary papers through Trove? So can I say to everybody who's there, I know Mara Louise Ayres, Director General, uh, Brett Mason, Chair, uh, Annabelle Crabb, I believe, chairing the event. I observed when I was at a function with Annabelle recently that she's an eminent, well-respected and quite forensic political interviewer. So while I'm always delighted to see Annabelle, at the same time as a politician, I get that slight sense of uneasiness that you get when you see your dentist on a social occasion. That's not in any sense to be critical of Annabelle. Love your work and thank you for chairing this event or convening this event this evening. Now, I've got one more piece of news to share with you. The work that's been done up to this point to upgrade Trove has come out of the library's existing resources. I can announce tonight that there will be additional funding over the next two years of $8 million to support the continued operation of Trove. So the National Library of Australia has made the case. We've got it through the budgetary process. I'm pleased to announce it tonight. So congratulations to all involved in taking this valuable and very widely used tool, over 28 million visits last year, taking this valuable tool, uh, taking it to the next level and making it even more accessible and even more useful to people around Australia and around the world. Well done. Thank you, Minister. I'd like to acknowledge the Australian Government and our partners for supporting Trove and helping us connect more Australians to their history and culture. Since its inception in 2009, Trove has become a thriving community hub and knowledge base, growing daily as our digital record of Australian culture expand. It's a vital resource in the National Library's mission to connect communities with the collective wonder of their national and local collections. At a time when the world is changing at a whirlwind pace, it has never been more important to have a resource of our culture, our history, our society that we can all access, building our own stories and adding to the nation's story. At the same time, there's never been a greater appetite to preserve Australian cultural sovereignty through freely available, digitised and online content. Books, maps, photographs, websites, entertainment, academic work, general interest subjects and, of course, our own family histories. What makes Trove's next chapter significant is the involvement of our almost 1,000 partner organisations. This is an extraordinary collaborative effort and we believe that it's unmatched anywhere in the world. Like Trove itself, the success of this modernisation project has depended on the support of the community. 20,000 users checked the beta version of Trove's next chapter to make sure it is user-friendly. Dozens of interviews were carried out to stress test the usability of Trove. Almost 2,500 users shared their views on the designs and the best ways for users to access material. A Trove community of practice helped us to understand the special needs of their communities. And when they told us not to change the name of a category called people and organisations, we listened. We undertook in-depth consultation with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities on cultural safety and raising awareness of the resources in Trove of relevance to their communities. And since its inception, over 316,000 voluntroves, an amazing community, have transcribed more than 358 million lines of newspaper text and created more than 92,500 lists on all manner of topics, from women's weekly party ideas in the 1950s to the impact of the Federation drought of 1891 to 1902, and one of my favourites, the history of the Australian lawnmower. 
The sum of all Trove crowdsourced activities equals 500 years of one volunteer's time, showing the passion that Trove users have for diving into and building on their own and our collective stories. I thank every Trove user who has given time, an opinion, an insight, or simply used Trove to help inform this project. Once again, I thank the Minister and the Australian Government for providing the funding that was needed to drive this modernisation project. I thank our Trove partners, without whose support our vision for this next phase in Trove's journey could not have been realised. And I thank my colleagues, every one of them, at the National Library of Australia for their passion for and commitment to bringing new Trove to fruition. I'd now like to introduce you to Dr Brett Mason, the Chair of the National Library of Australia's Council, who will introduce you to some of Trove's greatest fans. Hi, I'm Brett Mason and I chair the Council of, of your National Library. And I'm so delighted to be able to let you know that uh, we, the National Library, uh, in, in consultation with about a thousand other organisations in this country have been able to bring together uh, an entire digital record of our country's history. Uh, it's newspapers, diaries, magazines, maps, uh, and today even websites uh, available for you to look at uh, on, your, on your laptops and on your computer, going all the way back to the first uh, European uh, interactions with our Indigenous people, all the way through the convict, uh, convict era, and then of course into free settlers, uh, pioneering men and women, uh, through, the, through the wars, uh, through our poets, uh, politicians and dreamers, all their stories uh, are on trove. A long time ago, when I was a high school student, I studied here in this beautiful building, the National Library of Australia. And today, I still use the National Library but I'm at home in Brisbane uh, on my computer. And just the other day, I accessed some family history, the record of my grandparents' wedding uh, in Victoria, just prior to the Second World War. Now, how's that for free from your home? It's not bad, is it? Um, have a look for your story, which is part of Australia's story. Best of luck in finding it, and have a listen to these other stories. Thank you, and good luck. I love trove, because when I go fishing for ancestors, sometimes I get a small bite or a big haul of stories and facts that I can add to my personal history. Trove breathes life into my ancestors. That's why I love trove. I work in a large public library and I get a real buzz out of introducing trove to new researchers. I also love the, the list feature which helps me organise all my local and family history research, including my World War I research. Trove is an Australian national treasure for students, local and family historians and researchers. The new website, expertly managed by the tremendous Trove staff, gives us a modern, user-friendly interface. Being free and open will encourage everyone to learn more about Australian heritage and share this richness across the world. Cheers Trove. As an artist, Trove has helped me to shine a light on the colourful history of Maltese migrants living on the banks of the Torrance River during the Great Depression years. They revealed stories of human experience filled with hope and humour that otherwise would have never been heard if it wasn't for Trove's great resources. I use Trove almost every day in my research and in my teaching. Um, I'm a big fan and I've worked with Trove to digitise some 20th century magazines like Walkabout magazine, which provides an amazing insight into Australia's history. More recently though, I've just finished a book about a colonial poet, Eliza Hamilton Dunlop, and through Trove we've discovered that she published almost 60 poems in the Australian colonial newspapers. What an amazing treasure trove of colonial poetry to find. I think Trove matters to me because of the fact that it has connections with the communities that are back home in the Northern Peninsula area and it's that rediscovery of community and childhood um, and family connections. I think that's the most important thing. I've been a long-term user of Trove for newspaper lookups for historical research and the Railway Museum is now also a content partner with Trove putting a lot of our digital content online. 
I'm a historian of education and I use Trove to learn a lot about the history of how families and schools interacted with each other. My favourite part of Trove is the digitised collections of the Australian Women's Weekly. They're absolutely fabulous. I find that Trove is an invaluable resource for social and community history and I continue to be blown away by the resources that can be uncovered. Hi, my name's Peter Fitzsimons, I'm an author, and I absolutely love Trove. For me, and for my researchers, it's been something between a revelation and a revolution. It's just, it's facilitated the ability to bring to life stories long gone, thought dead. Trove is the national art, uh, the national embers of Australia's national story. And if you just blow lightly on them, you bring the whole thing to life. Flames, flames of creativity, of inspiration of what happened 100 years ago, 200 years ago. It's fantastic. Well, there you have it. Um, for the flames of creativity, um, creating a revolution and a revelation, appealing to the political nerds, to the poets, the politicians and the dreamers. By the way, the chair of the National Library of Australia, Brett Mason, has been all three of those things at various points of his career. Authors, family researchers, all round nerds love this platform and I think we're all beginning to understand why. Um, I should say, I love that detail, by the way, about the Voluntroves contributing 500 years worth of um, assistance and work to this amazing democratic platform. But I should say that there have been other people at the National Library of Australia uh, and associated entities who have been working incredibly hard on creating this new chapter for Trove, which is easier to use and um, full of possibilities and new material. And I'd like to applaud them because they really have pushed the boat out, particularly over the last few months, which have been really difficult. And I've got to say, when the Minister just announced um, $8 million in funding, their little faces lit up around the room. It was very nice to see. <laughs> and, uh, I saw a few bits of air applause, so um, that was a very welcome announcement. Now, uh, we are going to have a chat now with some experts about uh, Trove and, and what it means to them. We're gathered, some of us here physically, some virtually. Um, I'll start with our virtual attendee first, uh, Dr Bruce Penney is uh, joining us online from Charles Sturt University in Albury. Welcome, Dr Penney. Um, we also have uh, Marie Louise whom you've um, heard from already, uh, and she's the Director General of the National Library of Australia. Uh, right on the end there is John Morso, who is Access Officer and Research Librarian at the Australian Institute of Torres Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Studies, although he was a National Li Library of Australia person first. He was just, you know, seconded over. Yeah. He keeps coming back to do supervision in the reading room, so he kind of really belongs here. <laughs> and, uh, and we have Laurie Anderson, who is, of course, the director of the Law Library of Victoria, Supreme Court librarian, and um, enjoying a very active week in the law that we've had this week. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to bring you in, um, Bruce, first, because you're the furthest away. Um, but. I wonder if you could start by um, summarising for us the value of Trove to the work that you do. I'd rather speak more generally about what it means to regional people in regional Australia, and there it's fantastic. It's something you can contact with and get access to libraries all around Australia without having to uproot yourself and go to a capital city. And that's a marvellous invention. Uh, our deeply committed family historians, and some of them are very deeply committed, our local historians, our museum curators, our novelists, even our journalists, use Trove to explore our local pasts. And I think that that's a wonderful thing to be able to do. In Aubrey Wodonga, We've been able to use Trove to help students undertake historical inquiries of the kind that they're likely to do after they leave school. Multi-layered investigations that move easily between the local and the national. Um, there's been a big 
and I'd like to report a, a really positive impact on trove in the local area. And we found our community has given generous donations to help the two local societies uh, get more of the border newspapers onto Trove. I think people collectively are fired with the, by the idea of exploring their place identity, their regional identity, what was, what is Albury Wodonga. So from regional Australia, I want to give three whopping big cheers for Trove's new chapter. Well, they're gratefully accepted. Thank you, Bruce. I think there's a bit of cheering going around uh, all uh, parts of Australia from whence scholars and enthusiasts have been enjoying this resource and, um, and its expanded chapter that we're launching today. John, I thought I might come to you next to get your personal perspective on what gaps Trove fills in for you in your academic life? Academic life? So, yeah, great. So, Trove for me really hits many, many uh, points, I guess, in my life. It hits my community and family life as well as my academic and study. So, if I start off with my community life, which has been the most um, empowering for me, and Trove has enabled, you know, through digitised material and through access, really, just being able to give back to community. Um, community being able to zone in through technology because you know Canberra is quite far away from our regional spaces particularly from the Torres Strait where I'm from nobody knew about the National Library let alone Trove mm -hmm. so the opportunity to actually look um, through Trove and look at our old past so things in the 1930s and before um, really provides I guess I'm talking as a Torres Strait Islander greater depth of ourselves so looking back at our documented, Western documented material. So I really find that Trove enhances us, enhances ourselves of who we are, and how do we move forward? And I'm really excited to like e expand that and explore further with a greater awareness with our First Nations people um, around the country. And also as a Torres Strait Islander um, working in the cultural space, working with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. And what does that mean? You know, that really means about um, providing contact that's held in our cultural institutions, but using Trove, um, not only in my capacity with IATSIS at the moment, enables our First Nations people to look at all our cultural institutions across the country, which sometimes can be daunting because people, one, can't travel, but it enables them to know that not everything is held at IATSIS, not everything is held at the National Library, and provides a gateway for them to learn more. So I'm really um, excited with that. Great. I, I should say that um, all of our panellists are happy to answer questions, mm -hmm. so um, thanks to modern technology, I will immediately be magic to any question that you uh, you type in, So, and I'm happy to level it at any of our panellists, so send them through. They're um, happy to be questioned about almost anything. Um, Laurie, now, I know that um, your organisation um, is a partner uh, in Trove, but you're also quite uh, an unscratchably addicted personal <laughs> user of Trove. <laughs> I don't know which of those you'd like to address today. Up to you, really. Well, I'll, I'll probably do both, <laughs> and Belle, thank you. Um, certainly from my perspective as a librarian, uh, I'm the director of the Law Library of Victoria, which is an excellent law library. Mm. Uh, there's not much that we need in law that we don't have in our collection. But our users from time to time need other materials. And the databases of Trove help us bring the incredible network that is the nation's library collections to the users who need them. We get really, really great value out of the investment in libraries. And I applaud the minister's announcement uh, very, very sincerely. Great to see the continued funding of Trove. Uh, the other aspects of Trove, uh, for me the, there certainly is a great personal interest, but we used the digitised newspapers in, uh, uh, for a purpose that is, will have some resonance for everybody in the room. A few months ago we were all thrust into a new world of um, we had to learn how to live and work in a pandemic mm -hmm. state and uh, the librarians very swiftly in my library looked up on Trove. Uh, how did the courts manage <laughs> in the Spanish mm -hmm. flu in 1919 and mm -hmm. very, very quickly found those articles because they're so well indexed. The, the community text correction makes the discovery of items so easy 
and we were able to provide some of those examples, some more useful than others. There was um, one impact that required uh, the, the forming of queues where previously people hadn't had to queue to get into a courtroom and so the court relaxed the ban on smoking so that those <laughs> waiting in the queue <laughs> didn't get too stressed. That's 1919, I will say. That's not what we applied in 2020. <laughs> well, that's a relief. Speaking of um, the pandemic, Marie louise I wonder, what have you noticed that's different about people's use of Trove over the months of lockdown? Uh, interestingly, Annabelle, in the very early weeks, um, we saw the first little mini reduction in use of Trove while we were all glued to the ABC right. watching news to find out uh, what we needed to do next. And that really quickly changed. Mm. So we've seen a really big increase uh, in use of Trove over the more recent months. I think it's given people an opportunity to pursue their interests as well. Once everybody settled down and thought, wow, we're at home for a while here, it was an opportunity for people to pursue their research, whether it was academic research, community research, needing a cooking pattern or a knitting pattern, just about anything you could use really to keep yourself occupied. So recently we've seen really great use of Trove and uh, as people I think have started to have that opportunity to exercise curiosity because that's what they can do in Trove. Whatever you're curious about, mm. you'll find something. So in the old days, I mean, um, libraries were places where researchers would go and mm. academics would go and historians would go and consult the agreed or perhaps contested mm. texts of the time. What difference has it made to our study of history and our awareness of history to have ordinary people in there fiddling about, choosing bits of information, mm. finding things for themselves? I think it makes... Um, the, the practice of Australian history or understanding Australian culture or even Australian creativity incredibly egalitarian. Mm. Um, you know, before Trove, before digital, a, you know, a small number of people could come to an institution like this and use those print resources and they did. I see people who are using Trove creating what I think of as a whole lot of micro histories that are being gradually stitched together, knitted together into a much, much more rich, colourful fabric of Australian life. There is no excuse anymore to have a received wisdom about Australian mm. history, mm. to think that there is one story or one place you go to to understand you know, an Australian identity or an Australian history. So that sense of it opening up for um, a truly egalitarian tussling of ideas thrills me, just fills me with joy. Bruce, um, if I can bring you in again, please. Um, how do you feel as a, as a historian about this um, extraordinary resource of um, democratically sourced information? I mean, it, some of this is information that might have been overlooked by historians in the past. How useful is it to you as a, as a professional historian? I, I, th I think the, the good thing is it's a, a catalyst that awakens new inquiries that we haven't really looked at before. I found uh, incredible things easily available. For example, at the moment, I'm helping the local community look at the impact of the Second World War because we've got a commemoration of the end of the Second World War in a month or two. And I go to Trove, and I go to the Australian Women's Weekly, and I can see its advice to ex-service women as well as ex-service men on the challenges they'll find getting back to City Street. And I can go to my local paper and I can find the editor like to pontificate on the expectations he had of the role women should play, both in the wartime and past uh, um, uh, post-war. Now, I find access to that kind of material absolutely terrific to try and understand the mental furniture of, of what, to a lot of people, is grandfather's war or grandmother's war. Thank you. Um, John, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to hear about vulnerable publications. I was hearing um, when we were talking about this session earlier about one of the things that Trove can contribute is actually finding and digitising resources 
that weren't preserved at the time, you know, going back and digging out records that actually are quite eloquent about whole communities. Could you tell us a bit about that? I know that um, the Bamaga High newsletter is um, mm -hmm. uh, a publication that um, has been yeah. resurrected. Yeah, so Bamaga High School, my understanding, um, digitised, put on trove. And I think for, for Bamaga community in um, Northern Peninsula area in general is an opportunity for them to uh, look back one, at the, at the history of their community, um, but also an opportunity for older people to talk to the young, young people um, to know where they've come from. And Trove is an opportunity for that, to celebrate what they've achieved so far. And, you know, the high school um, digitisation and put on Trove is an opportunity to do that. Um, in, the, in regards to vulnerable, um, if I move away from that, because that's um, looking at my daily practice and looking at how do we deal with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people generally, you know, sometimes we come across digitised material that can be sometimes hard to deal with. Um, and I think as, pr as a practitioner in this space, it's really about creating that safe space and understanding that you're not always going to find the, um, the great stuff. You're going to find stuff that will you'll challenge you, challenge you internally as a person, but also as a community. So Trove um, is a pathway that allows that, but then us as, yeah, I think us as the practitioners is understanding that space and Trove has done that really well with the cultural sensitivity and transforming that and uh, making our, you know, the people who are using Trove aware and that's really, really, really deadly. It's, it's so interesting, isn't it, to think that because of the democratisation of the access to this information, you now have a situation where people can be on their own, Yep. looking on a computer and finding things that might be quite confronting about their own histories mm -hmm. or their family's histories mm -hmm. or even about attitudes um, yes, yes. 100 years ago or 150 years ago. So, um, Murray Louise, what, what's the responsibility of the, the, the custodian mm -hmm. of this mm -hmm. information to that end user who might be um, entirely unready for the things that they find? Yeah, it's something that we do talk about a lot and... Um, Anybody who's worked in this space will have been approached from time to time by people who found something that has been really profoundly disturbing mm. and they might wish that it wasn't in the public record, but it actually did happen. It was recorded at the time uh, and we try to be sensitive to that, but also, again, to think about... It's not, it's not our role to censor history as libraries, archives and museums. Um, it is our role to provide that sense of a safe space. Harder to do digitally, but I think we've done that with this beautiful new enhanced trove. Um, I've always wished that the new trove could be as beautiful and enlightening to work in as a reading room in a major library. I hope we've done that. But there will always be times when you'll find something you wish you hadn't seen. It might be about your family, mm. your community. It might be where you're just shocked yet, yet again by language that we would not accept now, nor should we. Um, but so much more is there that that's part of the price that we have to pay mm. for this egalitarian access. And we just have to hold firm to that belief that we will all be enriched, even if there is some pain and distress along the way. But we feel it. Yeah. One of the things I think is so exciting about this platform is just the extent to which people can look for things that are of interest to them, right? And, and reading just the testimonies from people who have found strange, illuminating, fascinating, bizarre or personally significant things, sometimes it's as simple as finding a photograph of a great aunt that you'd never had a photograph of before and it turns out that she won a flower show somewhere and it's been faithfully recorded in a local news newspaper and is now searchable. Um, is it about um, giving people the freedom to... Um, to do their own research about their own history and establish for themselves um, their relationship and their family's relationship to the world. Does anyone want to grab that? Uh, yeah, this is I'd an open-ended question. I'd be very happy to. Laurie, you're engaging. <laughs> <laughs> the alternative source of that family history is the stories being told with, through your family, which is still a very important source of information about family history. But it is coloured and uh, it's the perspective of those members of the family and what they observed and what they experienced and how they've thought and reflected over time. Being able to dive into Trove in uh, the comfort of your own living room 
particularly during coronavirus, because yes, I, I dipped, but then I got back in. <laughs> uh, and uh, descriptions of people that you know. I only knew my grandmother as a very old woman uh, that we treated with much respect and called her grandmother. Uh, to, to read descriptions of grandmother going to parties on the society pages mm. of the Korea Mail and the frocks she wore. I, am, I have got a general call out for what Mariette is. She wore a shrimp pink Mariette frock. But I don't know what Mariette is. Just saying is. shrimp pink Mariette frock <laughs> is an achievement, I think, Laurie. Well done. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> and also, um, learning of the stories of my mother's family out on the Darling Downs of Queensland. Um, it's terrific that, uh, to have that as a personal exploration to support the, the great stories that we share amongst the family. Mm. And those personal stories, I think, then... They also, one of the things we've really seen over the years of Trove is, you know, is people exploring family history, but then it comes up to community history too. Mm, so we've seen entire towns, so many small towns in regional Australia, where entire communities have gotten together and decided we are going to make sure that our community newspaper has been entirely text corrected because they want their community story to yeah. be told. So I think this is where I see this stitching together from the family story to the community story to the regional story to the huge number of stories of different communities in Australia. Yes. We've got more than a million pages of digitised newspapers in languages other than English in <laughs> Trove. So, um, uh, you know, the, all of the, the many communities that make up Australia, I think, really yes. also um, can do this same process of um, discovering themselves. I yeah. find that really exciting. Me too. And I would... Um, from you know, it's all about me today, Murray Louise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in Dolby, the, on the lands of the Jarrowell people. Uh, there's not much on Trove yet about Dolby. There are Trove partners out there who may not recognise themselves as potential partners mm. yet, but they have content, they have material that can make its way into the collection, which would build a much richer picture of that community that I grew up in. And I know it was much more than was printed in the Dolby Herald, <laughs> the, which great publication that it was. But um, there's a lot more out there in those communities for people to build that rich picture mm. of the nation, really. I think that's, mm. yeah, that's mm. an important point, mm. isn't it? That this is kind of a, a starting point. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, particularly in the collections that reflect Indigenous cultures too, like there are, I believe that there is a, um, a language um, directory now. Can mm. um, maybe John yes. or Marie-Louise explain Well, John, what, you um, from IATSIS yeah, can talk so about the Auslan grant. The Auslan, yeah. So IATSIS has created this partnership with Trove where, you know, First Nations communities can search their community or their language group that connects with collection material that's held at IATSIS or that's held within Trove and looking at the respective cultural institutions. So it's really a, another way where First Nations can get access to their material and also keeping in mind the spelling, different spellings right. and accommodating that because mm -hmm. over history, you know, spelling of language names and whatnot has changed or been altered, so there's also accommodating that. Um, what yeah. does this mean? I mean, to have this sort of one-stop portal, mm -hmm. what does it mean for the accessibility of that cultural material? Because, I mean, we all know that First Nations cultural material is widespread. Right, yep. Some of it has wound up in overseas museums, yep. which I know you've personally looked into. Um, how important is it to be able to have a centralised portal? Um, well, I'm actually really loving it. So... Um, I'm currently doing my PhD with ANU and I'm looking at Torres Strait Islander dance and song and it's, Trove has enabled me to look at material not only held in Canberra but then in uh, Brisbane, also in Perth and looking at how dance has been celebrated and documented and put on Trove. So it's mm. enabled me to just go, wow, I can find this material and, and you know, enrich myself really um, and I think that's what that's what thing it does. That's what Trove does. It grabs all of these ma collection material across the country, across the world, um, and, and enhances the individual and the communities. Yeah. There's a um, question that's come through from an online questioner saying, "What's on your Trove wish list? If you could have any item or collection digitised and in Trove, what would it be?" Well, I know that this new chapter of Trove 
includes every document ever tabled in Parliament, although I don't know if it captures the time when I recall a Democrat senator trying to table a dead bird as evidence of poisoning <laughs> in Parliament House. I don't think the bird would be available. Um, um, I, uh, I wonder, um, Bruce Penney, if you have a, uh, a wish list. Oh, of yes, yes, I, I want more border district newspapers, please. <laughs> more district newspapers. Well, given the rate at which local newspapers are disappearing, I guess we mm. may as well trove them as quickly as we can, right? I think so. Uh, we've we've digitised about two thirds of, Austra of known Australian newspapers, and we're going to close that gap um, for sure. Um, I was thinking you're happy about parliamentary papers. I'm oh, thrilled I'm happy yeah. <laughs> to see this thing that um, look nerds know what the Australian Joint Copying Project was. Years and years ago, um, this library and other libraries in Australia had the foresight to send people to the UK to hunt down and microfilm, which was the digitisation of its day, um, records relating to Australia in UK archives, private and public archives. And they've existed in 10,000 reels of microfilm that have all been you know, deteriorating. I've been involved with this microfilm for my entire career <laughs> here at the library. And we have almost 9 million images of this. It's now wow. all available online. Um, I'm going to put in a wish list, though. I once spent a year of my life here at the National Library as a research assistant on the Oxford Anthology of Australian Women's Verse. I looked at every book of poetry by Australian women mm -hmm. and anthologies and many magazines. I want to see every one of those digitised and on trove. Well, I During my lifetime. <laughs> I think there's no doubt about who's won platinum nerd status here today, <laughs> Anna Louise. You are, you've podiumed. Congratulations. <laughs> um, there's another great question. It's actually directed to you, Maria Louise, although I'm happy to hear from anyone on the panel. Um, how do you think people will be using Trove in 50 years' time? And how do you see its relationship to what we understand as a library? Do you have a vision? I'm going, I know you're busting to answer, but you know, <laughs> do any of our other, other panellists have a vision for Go what on. Trove might be like in 50 years' time? Well, I mean, uh, maybe we'll just have it in our brains like a pill. <laughs> <laughs> they might be able to um, see the front page news that this panel discussion was. Oh, yeah, yeah. Front page news. <laughs> Um, I, I will have a go yeah. and I'll think back because um, one of the wonderful things about working in an institution like this and being in a position like this is that you are standing on the shoulders of the giants who've been before you. So it's almost 40 years ago that this library initiated the first electronic, whole of Australia elect electronic yeah. system from which Trove has grown. Um, some of the people who've been involved with that are in the room and some I know are watching us, so thank you, you know who you are. I have a two-year-old granddaughter. Whether it's a pill or something else, in 50 years' time when she's grey and she'll be about as small as her, has her grandmother as well, I hope that she has really an opportunity to look at this extraordinary period in our history, the COVID pandemic, through the thousand or more archived websites that we've collected, mm -hmm. through all the ephemera that libraries and archives and museums um, that represent their communities right around the country are collecting. Mm -hmm. um, this will be a really rich source. It'll be mm -hmm. richer than the source available yeah. for the, uh, the Spanish flu. Um, I hope she won't be looking because there's another pandemic, but I hope there, there'll be that sense of a whole community feeling that this is a place where they know that future stories will be important. So, so Morgie, that's for you. I think um, I could not think of a better way to conclude this discussion, actually. I don't mean to cut any of the rest of you off, but I know that I have lamentably pushed this time out beyond its constraints. Um, that is a beautiful summary, I think, um, of why we're all so excited about this new chapter of Trove, because it's kind of about the future as well as the past. And I just want to make it very clear that this is an archive um, and a resource that is very unique to Australia. It feels mm -hmm. like a very Australian approach. It is free, it's accessible to anybody with a sense of curiosity and an internet connection. And so I would like to thank, as a bit of a nerd myself, um, everybody who has worked hard on this, either at the NLA or any of the other associated entities, and particularly those who are in this room. Thank you, because mm -hmm. you. the thing that you built is of enduring value and emotional currency 
and research significance to so many people, some of whom haven't been born yet. So um, congratulations. And do we consider the new chapter of Trove launched? I think we do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> I'd like to thank um, our panel, um, Mari Louise, of course, from the National Library of Australia, um, Laurie Atkinson um, from the Law Library of Victoria, John Morso, uh, and historian, uh, Bruce Penney, thank you so much, and for our distinguished guests that joined us virtually, thank you. And there's nothing more to say except go to the website is um, trove.nla.gov.au, dive into this pool of significant information and uh, enjoyment and get swimming. Thank you so much. <laughs>